Hey everybody, what's up? Kevin here from the My Song Today Rock 2000 to Today YouTube channel. And today is the beginning of our 2019 year end awards. So get ready because this is day number one of six and this is our most surprising album of the year. Alrighty, so when it comes to most surprising album of the year, we have a couple of things that we're looking at when it comes to albums that just completely surprise and wow us in the positive light. So we're looking for something that has taken a long time to come out or something where we didn't know it was going to come out and it just kind of came out anyway or the band was on hiatus and came back, maybe the band went back to a different sound, or it's a smaller band that doesn't have as much notoriety in the rock and metal community and are now just out there and they came out with a great album or EP, something like that. So we're gonna count down the top five most surprising albums of the year. And please remember, this is my opinion, so yours might differ. We will have the fan vote results in between numbers two and number one, so you guys can see what you as a My Song Today Rock 2000 to Today community voted for. But let's get going, so sit back, relax, get the popcorn ready. Let's go to the fifth most surprising album of the year. Let's go. So the fifth most surprising album of the year is Fear Inoculum from Tool. Now why was this album surprising? And that is because fans had waited 13 years for this album since the release of 10,000 Days back in 2006. This album also had been rumored to come out on multiple different occasions between 2012, 2014, 2017, and even in 2019. So there was a lot of talk about it and fans were kind of concerned whether we were going to get another album from the band. Even Maynard James Keenan was doing stuff with his side projects of Perfect Circle and Pucifer at the time as well. So no one was really sure what was going on. During an interview with Maynard James Keenan on the Joe Rogan podcast in July of 2019, he explained a couple of things to where each song is done by committee with each member of the band because everyone has to have a say, everyone's got to like it, and it's got to be perfect, which takes a long time because you have four different great musicians writing songs, so everyone wants something the exact same way. We already knew at that point that the album was going to come out on August 30th, 2019, but two other things were announced during that podcast. The first was the album was going to be called Fear Inoculum. And the second was that Tool's entire discography was going to be on streaming services and for digital download as of August 2nd, 2019, which is absolutely huge because the band had evaded that for such a long time. Now, the album did come out on August 30th, 2019 to much critical acclaim to where many critics were saying that this was an album that was 13 years worth the wait. Myself, personally, I liked the album. I didn't think it was 13 years worth the wait, but I did think it was good, especially with a song like Tempest, where I absolutely really liked that song with its consistent hard rock feel for fifth straight minutes. So why this album belongs on the list is because after 13 years, Tool came out with an album that so many people loved. I just like the album, but so many people loved it that deserved a spot on this list for sometimes people thought we may never get this one. So it's here. The number four most surprising album of the year for us is the Oh The Horror EP from the band GFM, aka Gold, Frankincense, and Myrrh. Now, why this EP surprising? Because I had never heard of this band or this EP prior to them reaching out to us about featuring them on Small Band Saturday. And once I listened to the song they sent me, I had to listen to the rest of the EP because I couldn't get enough of it with their beauty core style, which is like a mix of hardcore, metalcore, and you know those pop punk sounds. So they always say a mix of between like Paramore and Slipknot, which is actually pretty cool. I was able to get them on the Chord Progression podcast and talk them about their music as well and hear a couple of great stories like the great Cupcake War and also meeting Chris Motionless on a couple of different occasions and him remembering the girls every single time. So it was surprising to hear that this EP was fantastic and no one had really heard about it. But let's take a look at the music on this one specifically. Now let's take a look at the music on Oh The Whore, and there are three songs I have to pick out. The first is Give Me A Sign, where it has a faster pace, but more polished sound to it than the other songs on the album, and it does not really lose any intensity because of it with its more pop punk sound. This is the great Cupcake War sound, where the band will throw cupcakes at the crowd, and everyone's throwing cupcakes around as well during the end of their shows, and I really want to be a part of this at one point in time. On the inside is another track where it has a rougher, grittier, and rawer sense to it, but you can really get the feel that these 
these girls are really good, especially with their vocals as they go between clean and unclean throughout the whole entire thing and they don't miss a beat on it. Never Again is a mixture between Give Me a Sign and On the Inside where it has a crisper, more polished sound to it overall. Its construction is fantastic and the girls show that they can go between the clean and unclean vocals just as well. Overall, this one surprised me to a great extent because I was surprised this wasn't bigger than it actually had been and I cannot wait to see these girls live in 2020 if I get the chance. The number three most surprising album of the year is Shaped by Fire by As I Lay Dying. The reason why it's surprising is because this album came out seven years after their most recent release in 2012, and the reason behind that was what happened in between those years. In 2013, lead singer Tim Lambesis was arrested for hiring a hitman to kill his estranged wife and was sentenced to six years in prison in 2014. So the rest of the band, instead of continuing on with As I Lay Dying, put it on hiatus and ended up starting their own project called Woven War and went on with that. Once Tim was released and in 2018, they ended up putting out a music video for a song called My Own Grave to show that the band was back and that they were coming out with new music with the entire lineup just the way it was. Now, there are a lot of people that were liking the fact they were back and their shows were selling out, but some sh venues were dropping their shows because of the backlash against Tim Lambesis. Now in 2019, on September 20th, Shaped by Fire dropped, and let's look at the music. When we take a look at the music on Shaped by Fire, we have to take a look at songs such as Blinded and My Own Grave because both these songs show that the band has not lost that metalcore sound that they helped pioneer back in the early 2000s and they still have it and it's really hard hitting as well. Especially when you take a look at a song like Blinded where it's at the beginning of the album and you put the intro to the album in with this, you have the best intro into an album in 2019 with their intro and then Blinded put together. It is utterly fantastic. What other great part about the music is guitarist Nick Hippo, where even on songs where I thought the overall composition was weaker and the vocals weren't as strong from Tim Lambesis, oh man, Nick Hippa did not miss a beat. Nick Hippa was the best part on the album because everything he did was perfect. This is his magnum opus as a guitarist. The lyrics were also very well done as well because you get a look at what Tim was going through when he was hiring the hitman to kill his dream wife when he was in prison and everything it took for him to realize the error of his ways and turn himself around and try and get his life back on track and all the emotion that is behind it really shows in a lot of these songs. Overall, the return of As I Lay Dying with their full force lineup and sticking with that metalcore sound to come out with one of the best albums of 2019, in my opinion, definitely deserve a spot on the most surprising list. The number two most surprising album of the year is How It Feels To Be Lost by Sleeping With Sirens. Now, why is this album surprising? It's because of its contrasting style between the previous release. If you take a look at Gossip in 2017, Gossip had more of a poppier sound that fans really didn't stick with. And the reason behind that was because when the band was writing the album, they had many other producers and outside songwriters writing these songs with them. So it really didn't feel like the band was connected to it, as they have said. And Kellen Quinn was really disconnected from the album and that began to drive him away from the band as well to the point where he was turning to alcohol and becoming disconnected with the band and his family overall. For writing How It Feels To Be Lost, the band got back to their old style of writing where it's just the guys in a room together writing the songs together and they were going to go with a sound that they wanted to go with. So they end up going back to their old sound overall. If you want to hear what I'm talking about with their old sound, listen to albums like Let's cheers to this and With Ears To See With Eyes To Hear, the band's first two albums because they went back to that signature sound. But Enough with that, let's take a look at the music on this one. Taking a look at the music on How It Feels We Lost, there's three songs that really show this. The lead single, Leave It All Behind, I swear to God, is a direct descendant, direct cousin, the offspring, I don't care what it is, of their most famous song, If You Can't Hang. It has a very similar style. The music videos are almost the exact same, and it just shows that the band can go back to that sound and how much of a force they have with it. It also shows that Kellen Quinn's vocals are still there when it comes to the unclean screams at some points, but then that high-pitched singing voice that he does have, it shows it off here. Break Me Down is another track that's very similar to anything 
on the album with ears to see and with eyes to hear. And this is because it is a very rough sounding song, very hard, very fast paced. And you get that from the intro snare as well, because it's just pounding overall. The other best part about the song is because you get to see Kellen Quinn really focus on those grittier, rougher, unclean vocals, and to see it overall that these guys can still go hard. The titular track, How It Feels Be Lost, has more of an alternative rock sound to it with some pop tendencies in it, but it's the pop tendencies that the band had been pulling into their album albums since their first and second releases. So this is nothing new for them, but they were going with overtly pop tendencies. Kellen Quinn was also very well done on this one with the vocals as well, because he focuses more on those cleaner vocals and it shows that C still has that prowess to go and do that. The lyrics also stand out here as well, much like As I Lay Dying and with Tim Lambesis, Kellen Quinn penned this album to show how much he had gone through between the release of Gossip and the release of How It Feels to Be Lost, the two years of alcohol. The two years of feeling disconnected from the band, feeling disconnected from his wife, feeling disconnected from his daughter. You get to hear the emotion in every single aspect of it, and he doesn't relent in any sort of way. Overall, the reason this album is on this list is because Sleeping With Sirens thankfully went back to their original sound, which fans have been clamoring for, and Kellen Quinn went so full-on honest that it really hits you hard emotionally, and you can really connect with it, along with connecting with Kellen Quinn as well. Okay, so before we go to the number one overall pick, let's take a look at the side for the fan vote. The top five albums you guys picked as the most surprising albums of 2019. Do they follow suit with yours? Do they follow suit with mine? What's my number one? <gasps> And the winner for the most surprising album in 2019 is The Dead Days by Get Scared. Now, why is this album surprising? It's because this album was released without really any fanfare to it, as the band had been working on this album for about a year or two at this point. But in January, the band did go on hiatus because of lead singer Nicholas Matthews' heroin addiction and for him to get better with it. Johnny Braddock, the guitarist for Get Scared, ended up saying on April 10th that Get Scared the Dead Days would end up dropping on April 19th. Myself, I didn't find out about it until two days beforehand, and I thought, okay, you know, we gotta give a listen to it. When I listened to it, I was incredibly happy, and I will say why. Also, on September 15th, Nicholas Matthews created a YouTube account for himself to explain that Get Scared had officially disbanded with Johnny Braddock going solo and focusing on his more solo work and not necessarily sure where Get Scared was going on with this point. So the band's over, but let's take a look at the music on this one before we really give a final verdict. Now let's take a look at the music, and again, three songs really exemplify this album in particular. The lead song, Bad Things on the Album, it has this mix of hard rock really pronounced in there, but it mixes some metalcore in there as well to really just get this unclean vocal work from Nicholas Matthews, which shows the sheer beauty of it. And Nick is leaving it all out there, describing his hair addiction as the bad things, and it shows a lot of emotion and really connects you with how rough this song is in terms of its construction and sound. Hell is where the heart is, is much heavier and it's just the intro why it's heavier as well the instrumentation on it is heavier but the sound of nick's vocals allow the song to blend many different genres such as post hardcore hard rock metalcore they allow it to blend so many different ways and then the titular song the dead days this is a pop punk emo jam that would have been the talk of the town in 2006 i absolutely love this song especially listen to how the chorus is constructed where it's very catchy as as well. It also talks about how, you know, the dead days that your days are going to be over at some point. This is a great theme as well for this song along with the album overall. Now, why is this the winner? It's because it was released with such little fanfare. It's because this ended up being the band's last album overall. And this all happened within the span of this year. And if this is the album that, you know, the band is known for, even though they kind of came out with a little bit of fanfare on it, if any, and it was this fantastic that I couldn't stop listening to it for a couple of months. Oh yeah, this is definitely the number one pick for the most surprising album of the year. All right, that's it for me. Thank you for watching the My Song Day Rock 2000 to today. Most surprising album of the year awards for 2019 with the winner being the Dead Days by Get Scared. If you like the video on the list, give me the like. If you dislike it, give me the dislike, but put in the comments what your list is and what you think of my list as well. I wanna hear what you guys have to say. If you like the video and the awards, hit the subscribe button down there and the bell icon to be notified when we release videos every single Wednesday, sometimes some special Monday ones, the Tuesday podcast ones, and to be kept up to date when we release videos for our year-end awards day after day after day. Now, you can also follow us on social media on Facebook where you're gonna 
going to find out when anything gets put out there. Twitter, you can talk to us as well. Instagram, where you can do stuff like talk to us, answer our questions that we post on there. Join our IGTV videos every single week because we get a behind the scenes look at what we're doing here. Join our Instagram live streams every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Central. You can talk to us for a little bit about music, life, whatever. Also on all three of those, you can get the 30 second preview for each song of the day clip. And TikTok and look, we just do some fun stuff on there. Get those out of here. Talk about the core progression podcast. It is our very own podcast. We're able to deep dive further into the world of rock and metal music. So what we do on the that core progression podcast is, you know, we'll take a look at the week that was, and we'll talk about the topics of the day. We will also talk about albums that come out and really go deep dive song by song. We'll talk to you guys, the fans, and we'll talk to music with you. And we'll also interview some smaller bands as well, hoping to do bigger bands in the future for 2020, but you can get in the know on some of these smaller bands before they get big. So you can listen on Spotify, Apple podcasts, Google play, or you can watch it right here on YouTube. Everything I mentioned links for everything description below. And lastly, if you have not enabled our Amazon Alexa skill, please go and do that right now because that's where you get to hear the whole entire song of the day feature. You can use it to get up in the morning, go to bed, rediscover old bands, discover new bands, listen to the small bands we feature on small bands there. You can hear them for 24 hours and the next day, boom, you get a brand new song. It's a great way to get your rock music fill. And I want to thank you guys for watching this video. This is day one of the 2019 year end awards. We'll go to day two tomorrow. But until then, this is Kevin from the My Song of Day Rock 2000 Today YouTube channel. You guys know how I end the videos. Hat flip. Ow. See ya.